So that is it, guys. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome up Pastor Julie, who's going to bring us the word. <laughs> Oops, a daisy. <laughs> We'll collect that later. <laughs> Welcome on board flight 2018. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you for choosing Salvation Airline, and I assure you comfort as bestowed in John 3.16 and John 10.10. 10. Flight 2018 is ready and will be taking off from January 2018 airport to December 2018 airport. Please be reminded that during our flight, we will land in 12 interesting sites, taking us a total of 365 discovery days. We shall be cruising at uncountable blessings per day and at a million miles above sorrow level. The weather may be cloudy, but grace is sufficient. There may be some turbulence, but divine intervention is certain. The Prince of Peace will speak, peace be still, to your storms. The angels are our cabin crew. They will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. You shall not lack anything good. Our menu includes peace, grace, mercy, favour, sound health, success and prosperity. Amazingly, they are all free, courtesy of Captain Emmanuel, Jesus. Note that this is a no weeping, no mourning flight. Please fasten your seatbelt. You and all the members of your family will land safely. For more information about your safety on board, please always contact your safety manual, the Bible, on a daily basis. For any question, the Holy Spirit shall give you answers any time. In Jesus, there shall be no losses in John 17, 19 to 9. Welcome to the year 2018 and flight 2018. And guess what? We're already aboard. And why are we already aboard? Because we all belong to Jesus Emmanuel. So there we are. That speaks of vision, position and perspective. It doesn't mean to say we're not going to run into turbulence and problems, but the answers are in there already. So that was sent to me by a friend of mine, and I thought I'd just share that with you, just to encourage us this morning. How many feel that um, this year is different? Yeah. Can you raise your hands for me? That's interesting. I'm feeling that too. I'm just really sensing that the start of this year is the start of a year that's going to be quite different from perhaps what we've known. And uh, I just uh, want to share something with you, some encouragement just to begin with, that I felt the Lord wanted to give to you as I was in prayer last week preparing for this morning. And I just want to really just release what I feel is his encouragement over you. I felt that he said to me that you are a praying people. Now, I know that too, but I felt the Lord was really wanting to highlight that, that you are a praying people. He knows that. And I felt that he was saying that much of his purpose has been accomplished and many of Satan's attempts to subvert have been thwarted because of the faithful prayer in this house. So that's a word for the house this morning. I saw, as I was praying, I actually saw incense and I saw thick incense rising from this house before the throne of God. That's the incense of your prayer. I actually saw that in the spirit. I saw this house covered in prayer and I sense that the Lord is so pleased with your faithfulness, so pleased with your worship and that his favour is upon you in 2018. Amen. I sensed also, and I'm going to prophesy this and pray it, I also sense this in the spirit, that healing rain is coming where there have been battles, yes. that his provision is coming where there has been lack and that his peace is coming to bring an end to seasons of contention. That clarity is coming and that he intends to make himself known as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in this house. Yeah. Jesus, you are the King of Kings and you are the Lord of Lords. I'm just going to pray into that. So let's just pray for a moment. I thank you, Lord, that the healing reign of your spirit is coming in lives with families who have been impacted by issues that have caused much pain. Lord, just release that healing reign right now and we thank you for it. I thank you, Lord, that provision is coming where there's been lack. And Lord, we just see that release from the spirit realm right now in the name of Jesus. We see the healing reign released into families. We see the provision released where there's been lack in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that your peace brings an end to contention. God is calling an end to it. There's an end to the season of contention and going into 2018, God is saying he will bring his peace into those situations. I thank you, Lord, that your peace brings resolution and it brings clarity. 
Peace is not just calming the waves. Peace is resolution. It is resolving things and bringing clarity into things. And Lord, we thank you for that. And we honour you this morning as Jesus, as King of Kings and Lord of Lords in this house. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, often there's a, a call for a fresh start sometimes and to let go things of the past year or even past years. But I'm sensing this morning much more than that for us. I sense that this year is going to be very different. And I'm sensing a call for us to rise up in the Word of God, We're to rise up in the Word of God, to rise up in prayer and worship and to honour Jesus as the soon coming King. The soon coming King. I sense also a real urgency in my own spirit about the nature of the times and seasons that we're moving, have been moving through and are now moving into. It's quite different from anything I've felt before. First of all, I just want to paint a big picture of Jesus, this soon coming King. Let's just think about the church for a minute. And we know that Jesus is head of his church. So let's just open our spirit eyes for a moment and see just a little bit beyond what's in front of us this morning. The visible church is what you see in front of your eyes. So we see a visible church here this morning as we are gathered or anywhere where the people of God are gathered. There's also the invisible church and that's what God sees. And what he sees is hearts that have been submitted to Jesus and are following him, where Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus is head of the whole church, the whole church. That's how big he is, not just this church, the whole church. When we honour Jesus, we honour him as the head of the invisible church that we don't see where God sees hearts all around the world. He is big. Come back to that again. That's the Jesus that we honour. He's not a little Jesus. You know, he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So this morning, I just feel that we're honouring Jesus as chief shepherd. That's what I just described to you. We're going to honour him as the wisdom of God, the bright and morning star and the captain of the Lord of hosts. I shared this story some years ago now, but I just feel to, to share this again because the Holy Spirit brought this back to me. Some years ago now, I was service leading up here and I was actually in the spirit as well as being here, so I was literally in two places. So the other place that I was in was standing, it was like on being on the edge of heaven and Jesus was on my right hand side and he was standing here wearing a white robe and a red slash sash <laughs> and in front were the gates of heaven, they were golden gates of heaven, so we're standing here. And on the other side of those gates of heaven were people pressing and wanting to get in. And I felt that the Lord was saying even then that the time is coming soon when the gates of heaven are going to close. So there's an urgency which we know. So I just want to refresh us in that again, that time is running short. Time is running short for the lost to be found, for people to encounter Jesus, to come into his kingdom and to know him as King of King and Lord of Lords. Now in relation to the word, I feel that God is calling us all here to continue into maturity into the handling of his word. Now, we have a deep well of the word here in this house and God is really wanting us to mine that well and to go deeper into that well. He's encouraging us to do that. And if we look at Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 to 14, it says, that, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God and you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Speaks of going deeper, speaks of searching things out. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Key words in there. Solid food, use, senses exercised to discern. So this morning we're going to be talking about some of these things. Here the word is speaking, the word itself is speaking about skill in the word and spiritual senses working together. So the place of the word. One of our core values here is growth spiritually and numerically. So we're going to be looking at spiritual growth this morning in relation to that core value. The other core value and one of the others is the word itself. So we're looking at those areas this morning. I just feel that um, there are three areas of spiritual growth on the basis of the word, the rock, that we're just going to cover this morning. And I believe that God's going to speak to you as we cover that this morning. We're going to be in the word. I also felt that um, in 2018, these are three areas that we're going to need to be equipped in. And that's wisdom, discernment and revelation. Now, it's for everybody. I want to say that right up front. 
and the word will show you it is for you, every single person, to walk in the wisdom of God, the discernment of God and the revelation of God's spirit. So I want to encourage you this morning that nobody is left out of this. It is for every single person and God really wants you to dig into this and to rise up in this. Why? Because we're going to need it. The, the, the age that we are moving into in the natural is going to mean that we're going to require these things to be able to discern what is happening, to know what is of God, what's not of God, to have the wisdom to know how to respond and how to think about it, and the revelation to understand what the word reveals, so that we're not caught left-footed, so that we're not troubled, that we're not disturbed, because we understand what God's plan is. So can I encourage you in that this morning? Okay. So let's have a look. I feel also that... um, Before we go into it, I feel that the Lord would also say to us this morning, do not be deceived into a false sense of security, which is actually apathy. Be on watch and be on guard at all times. But in that place of being on watch, rest in me, as I am the one who illuminates and enlightens. I am the one who directs and guides. I am the one who lives within you so that you can see with my eyes and hear with my ears. So the Lord's also encouraging us with wisdom, discernment and revelation to be on watch, on guard over our own lives, our families and any other place where the Lord has given us jurisdiction, where he's given us authority. I feel like the Lord is calling for an end to double-mindedness and an end to confusion and for also for us to move into the place of rest in him out of which he can freely flow. No more striving, no more struggling, no more performance. Resting in him and allowing him to flow through us is that place that he's calling us into. So he wants us to be equipped, and the reason why he wants us to be equipped is to ensure that our footsteps are following his path, the path of the Lord, the one that he has gone before us to open up. How many of you this morning feel equipped in the word of God to the degree that you feel you need right now? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Can I encourage you in that? You probably are better equipped than you think you are. That's the first thing I'll say. You probably are better equipped. If you've been reading the word, if you've been studying the word, you have an equipping. But there is something deeper. So God's encouraging us to go deeper. To be equipped in the word is to know what the word says about a situation. To be able to find out what God says in a given situation. To know where to go in the word. To have an idea of what book is about what. And you can read that, you know, in the front of your own Bibles. You can read the description, book by book, of what that's all about. But can I encourage you in that this morning? Because I think that you are greatly equipped, much greater, because this is a house of the word. So let's just deal with this, because if we're sensing that we're not equipped, there's something here we need to deal with. If you know, if you have a situation in your life, do you know where in the word to look? Yeah, some know where to look, okay. Some do, some don't. All right, I just want to encourage you to find that out. I'll just encourage you if you just do something really simple, like go to your Bible, read the summary of each book in your Bible, that will give you an idea of what that's all about. Because this is very, very important to you. But I don't want you to feel intimidated because I just sense that you're probably better equipped. Sometimes you might need to go to someone and say, can you help me with this? And there's nothing wrong with that either. I'm just not certain about this. Can you help me? That's how I learned. People around me who knew more than I did, who understood the word better than I did, I would go to them and they would show me. So don't be afraid to ask because we can help equipping each other. So can I encourage you in that? All right, let's just go one step deeper because I believe this is where the Lord really wants to take us. Um, not necessarily this morning, but this, I believe, is a path. How many feel you can identify teachings that do not line up with the word? Yep, yep, some do. It's always good to be able to do that. I'm encouraging you this morning because I think God is encouraging us this morning to go deeper. It's always good to check something out. Just because you hear someone say it on the platform, you check it out for yourself. And the Holy Spirit will give you a little bit of a nudge. So he might give you a bit of a nudge and you think, I'm not sure I understand that. Let's go and have a look at it or I might ask somebody else about it. 
or, uh, you know, you might hear something and you think, I'm not sure that the word says that, but there may be an explanation for it. But really, maturity in the word is something I believe is a goal that you can be encouraged to set in your own life. So I believe the Lord wants to encourage us. It is your greatest equipping. Can I say that? That word of God, that sword of the spirit is your greatest equipping in life. Just as we heard in that little narrative about Flight 2018. That is your source. That is your reference point. So I'm encouraging you this morning because I believe God is encouraging you in 2018 to make that a goal for yourself and ask for help. There's plenty of people who can help and who can provide input and who can provide guidance. So don't be afraid to ask. It's the best way to learn. Okay. So who's ever been in situations where you've needed the wisdom of God? Time after time, after time, after time. We all find ourselves in those situations, don't we? Maybe making critical life decisions. What's my life calling? What should I be doing? What should I be studying? Who should I marry? Where should I live? What should I do with my finances? How is God wanting me to serve him? Some of those are areas. Other times when we may find our backs up against the wall. Who knows what that's like? You might find yourself in a tight situation. What do I do now? How should I handle this? Times like this, we need the wisdom of God. (laughs) And it's something way beyond human wisdom. And this is the point I want to make this morning. Wisdom of God is something way beyond human wisdom, but it is available to each and every person who belongs to Jesus. The wisdom of God is available to you. Our capacity is limited, but God is unlimited. And his wisdom transcends all earthly space and time. Why? Because he's the master architect and the master builder of a life that's submitted to him. So let's just have a look very quickly what the word says about wisdom. And don't let the enemy lie to you as I'm speaking and tell you that this is not for you or that you can't get there or there's any reason why. So don't let him lie to you as I'm speaking. (laughs) James 1.5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Ask and it shall be given to you. Lord, I need your wisdom in this situation. Would you please guide me? Would you please show me? Simple prayer based on faith in the word. Simple prayer. Let's have a look at Psalm 111 verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. They go together. So that fear of the Lord is intimacy balanced with a healthy reverence for who the Lord is. That balance of intimacy with healthy reverence for who he is. When we're recognising who he is, that's the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs 1.7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So wisdom and knowledge are starting to be related here. We're talking about spiritual things here, things that come out of the spiritual realm. (laughs) Proverbs 2.6, for the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Not from our mouth, from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. When we pray and when he starts to show us, when we start to sense and feel his answers, his mouth. Proverbs 9.10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So here we've got this. What's it telling us? Telling us the knowledge of the Holy One, which is God, is understanding that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. That out of the mouth of the Lord comes knowledge and understanding. The Lord gives wisdom that we can seek it and we can have it. So who wants the wisdom of God? I do. I can't live without it. Don't always, don't always follow it. Not perfect. <laughs> None of us are perfect. But by gosh, in this life on earth, we need God's wisdom in so many situations, way and above earthly wisdom. So how can we grow in the wisdom of God? It's in his word. Seek it out. Simple. We know what God is like from his self-revelation in the word. Seek it out. Can I encourage you this morning? Seek it and it will be given to you. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you will find. They're the words of Jesus. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. Ask him for his wisdom. When we're perplexed, stuck, uncertain, seek out what is in the word, as we've said before. 
When God speaks, it is significant and he will give us the wisdom that we need for our own situation. Many of you are walking in it perhaps without even realising that you are. That's a possibility as well. You are walking in the wisdom of God. But the encouragement this morning is to seek it out for 2018. Let's have a look at Jesus quickly. Isaiah 11.2 said, The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding. There we go. The Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. So that also rests on you because you are in Christ. That rests on you. Luke 2.40, And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Luke 2.52, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, in favour with God and men. So wisdom is something that you grow into. And that's an encouragement for the children here this morning, growing in wisdom. And I know we've got you know, great parents here who are guiding but they grow in wisdom. So we grow in wisdom also. So you've got this sense of growing as we grow into maturity in the word and into maturity in God. You grow in that area of wisdom when you seek that out and ask God to come in. So can I encourage you this morning to make it a priority to seek the wisdom of God in your own situations, in your decision-making, in your judgments, in your prayer life. It's an equipping that's available to you for your life. Let's look at the second area. Let's look at discernment. So, 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So that's saying you cannot know in your mind the things of God. It is spiritually discerned through your spirit, through your heart. Discern means, the word discerned means to be examined and judged. So it's from the spirit and not the natural mind. Very important that. Discerning means to pull apart with the help of the Holy Spirit to look at what is beneath the surface, to identify influences and their source around you, to discern the difference between the influence of the Holy Spirit and other influences. It is supernatural knowing. It is sometimes called the sixth sense. So who would like greater discernment? I would. It's something you grow in as well. God wants you all to be equipped that you would be able to discern what is going on around you. It's part of your inheritance for you to have this. Discernment can also help us in a couple of areas. So let's have a look at one thing. I just feel that the Lord's reminding us this morning of Joshua preparing the people to enter the promised land. So if we go back to the book of Joshua and you find that the people were about to enter into God's promises, basically, that's what it was. Joshua 3, 2, 4 is a very interesting verse and it says this. So it was after three days that the officers went through the camp and they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, carrying it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. So it's talking about following the direction of the ark. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. This speaks of being able to stand back a little bit and discern and see direction of the Spirit. Stand back a little bit. Watch, wait, the direction of the Spirit in your life and around you. It means coming to a place of quietness in your soul and stillness in your spirit and watching and listening and allowing the Spirit to bring revelation into your heart that you would know the times, the seasons, and the movement of the Spirit of God. That is your inheritance, to know the times, the seasons, and the movement of the Spirit of God, because you are a spiritual people. Can I encourage you to build that into your lifestyle, to spend that time with the Lord in his word and in prayer? Very important to do that. We have to become still because our soul is busy. <laughs> our mind is busy. Our emotions are busy. So we need to be able to stand back, just like standing back behind the ark. We have to just stand back a little bit and spend that quiet time and just allow our soul to quieten, our mind to, to become focused on the Lord, our emotions to quieten, and then 
in prayer and in the word and in interaction with the Holy Spirit that revelation comes. Really important. We get so busy, don't we? I don't know about you, but you can get so busy day in, day out, commitments right, left and centre. However you do it is up to you. For some people they can do it daily, some people it's weekly, some people might to take specific time off at certain times of the year to be able to do that. But it's so important that we build that into our lifestyle. So important to do that so that we can actually, you know, the closer we are, the, the I don't know about you, but the closer something is, the less clear it looks. It's right in front of your eyes, but it's a bit blurry. When you stand back a little bit, start to see it a little bit more clearly. And standing back also has a sense of time, a sense of timing. So I can encourage you in 2018 to start building some of those things into your life. just want to touch on another area of discerning that I feel we need for our equipping this morning, and that's discerning the trap of legalism. Now, Satan always wants to draw you into legalism because he's a legalist. So we can become bound up on minors and minors become majors. Our perspective becomes distorted. And uh, he wants to dethrone Jesus as Lord. He wants to steal the peace and joy in believing. Romans 15.13 says, now may the God of hope, and Pastor Matt spoke about hope recently, fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So these things we're talking about are related to the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. So wisdom is through the power of the Spirit. Discernment is through the power of the Spirit. We can rely on ourselves and what we know instead of praying and trusting the Holy Spirit and waiting on him and seeking the counsel of others. So we can't be independent. We need to be interdependent because we need each other. You know what? We learn from each other. We rub shoulders with each other. Iron sharpens iron. Not one of us has everything, but together we have the fullness of Jesus. Iron sharpens iron. So we're in this together. We learn together. We're not an island We need the revelation of the word. We need the full counsel of God, which means searching out the word from all angles, not just selected scripture or verse, the ones that we already know for every single situation that we face. So what are we seeking here? With the help of the Holy Spirit, we're seeking what? Revelation as to what the living word says to me in this situation. Revelation. This is the third area we're going to touch on. How are we travelling? How are we travelling on flight 2018? <laughs> are we still buckled in or are we bailing out? <laughs> Who's in? <laughs> Who wants to get out? <laughs> Not a very safe place to be, I'd suggest. Not a very safe place to be. So let's have a look at Revelation. Ephesians 1, 15, 18. This is a prayer of Paul and it's just a beautiful prayer that he prayed to the Ephesian church. He says, Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints... Okay, this morning it's our faith in Jesus and our love for each other. Do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. This is Paul's prayer. And his prayer was that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That's just what we've been talking about. Spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. It points to Jesus. Can I say that? It points, it always points to Jesus. Wisdom points to Jesus. Knowledge points to Jesus. Discernment points to Jesus and his work and his victory and everything else. And revelation points to Jesus. Jesus is the beginning and he is the end. He is the author and he is the finisher. He is the giver of all good gifts. He can release these things that's released upon him. It is given to you. Go after it. Go after it. Seek it out. Desire it. There's nothing wrong with that. The enemy will tell you, oh, no, that's pride, or he'll tell you so many other things. Don't listen to him. I'm not good enough. Rubbish. Liar, liar, pants on fire. (laughs) Liar, liar, pants on fire. He will tell you, I'm not spiritual enough. Rubbish. He'll tell you, I don't know enough of the word. Rubbish. You can go and sort it out. (laughs) You can seek it out. It's there for you. And as I said, there's more in you. I'm trying to stir you up this morning because the Holy Spirit's stirring me up. There is more in you than you realise there is. 
So he wants to awaken us this morning. He wants to rise up this morning in what you have because you can't see it. But believe it because it's in the word. Believe it because it's in the word. So I'm going to pray this prayer over you. Is that all right? (laughs) Father of glory, may he give to us and may he give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of, of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. We've been speaking this morning about some of the inheritance that you have. So as you wait upon him, the Holy Spirit will bring revelation to you. He will bring revelation as to who Jesus is, as to who you are. And we've spoken about this a lot. But it's revelation from the Spirit that brings that to you. Revelation comes through the Word, through the hearing of the Word, through the speaking of the Word. It comes through the Spirit. Revelation means disclosure, to reveal, at times to manifest This is not super spiritual stuff. This is everyday Christian life. This is what you need. (laughs) It's what we need. To wait means exactly that. Come into a place of quietness and soul, stillness of spirit, and as I said before, build it into your life. Build it into your life. Also, as needed, the Holy Spirit will give you revelation. This is really important, equipping for us. He will give you revelation as to what's going on around you for the purposes of wisdom Responses according to the word and at times to warn and to prepare. As we go through our life and especially, especially in family life, especially in family life, we come across situations that are very, very difficult at times and we wonder what is going on here? What on earth is going on? Well, sometimes it's not on earth. Sometimes it's in the spiritual realm that things are going on. So we need this equipping. I know myself, I've been personally forewarned many times by the Spirit of God of impending spiritual danger many times. Sometimes I've been able to avoid it, sometimes to engage in spiritual combat, sometimes to be prepared to stand on Jesus the rock, but you have to know where you are. You have to know where you are in Christ and where he is. It starts and ends with Jesus. He will also bring revelation of opportunities to speak with people. We've spoken about that a lot. That comes from revelation when he shows you this person or he shows you that person or he says, go and do this or go and do that. He'll bring revelation as to how he sees others. This goes back to seeing with his eyes and listening with his ears. That comes through revelation of the Christ who is in you and allowing that revelation that he has to flow through you. So this morning, what is it that we're going to take with us aboard flight 2018? And what are we going to leave behind this morning? You can't take it all with you because it won't fit into your new life. It just won't fit. Not enough luggage to carry all our excess baggage, is there? Excess baggage costs dearly in the natural for anyone who's boarded a flight and paid for excess baggage. Costs a lot of money. (laughs) Costs dearly also in your spiritual life and in your emotional life to carry excess baggage. Now, the mistakes and experience of, of yesterday can and often should be taken forward, not always discarded, but in the spirit of learning and growing, not in the spirit of guilt and shame and condemnation. But in the spirit of learning and growing, we can take our mistakes and experiences of yesterday forward because God turns it into good. So sometimes we get stuck at this point of, you know, things we want to let go of or things we don't want to remember because it's the guilt and the shame and the condemnation of those things or the disappointments and everything else. Let's turn it around the other way. How about we go forwards learning from what we have made mistakes in? We all learn through mistakes. You see, if we didn't learn through mistakes, we'd be trying to operate in perfectionism, and we can't. We can't do that. So God is good, and he teaches us, and he turns everything around for good. So we discard those things that are negative, but let's go forward learning 
from life experiences. Let's go forward learning from God. Let's go forward learning from each other. Sometimes the things that we need to let go of, often we think of the negative things, don't we? How many are like me? You might think, I want to get rid of this, this and this. And sometimes that's necessary. How about this? What about the things that we're treasuring in our hearts? What about the things that we're valuing in our hearts that are getting in the way? What about our secret ambitions? What about our little idols that are hidden away? What about our own achievements, the things we're proud of? Not hard to let go of the things that we're not proud of, but how about the things we're proud of? (laughs) That can be excess baggage. That can be pretty heavy excess baggage. You know why? Because it all belongs to Jesus, not us. All belongs to Jesus. So can we just take a couple of minutes now and let's just ask the Holy Spirit this question. So let's each of us ask the Holy Spirit this question. What are you going to need to leave behind and what do you need to take with you? Just spend a couple of quiet moments here with him this morning. If you can, write it down. You can key it into your phone or anything else that you may have with you. But we're just giving the Holy Spirit space to move just at the moment. What is he saying we need to leave behind? And what is he saying you need to take with you this morning? I believe also that um, the Lord is saying that he's drawing a plumb line this morning and that we have a choice now. We have a choice this morning and I feel that he's saying, do you choose the wisdom of God or do you choose the wisdom of the world? They're not the same. And I feel that God is asking for a clear choice this morning. The wisdom of the world is enticing. It looks good, but it's not God. So he's calling us to make a choice. What are you going to choose? not saying that everything in the world is bad. I'm not saying that. It's not the secular, sacred divide here. It's just that where is our source of wisdom? What is going to be your source of wisdom? Is it going to be God? Because if it is, it means searching him out in his word first. It means putting him first and what he says first very easy to be bound up in this day and age in earthly wisdom because it's in front of us right left and center but as people of God we're called by him to put him first and why wouldn't we do that why would we not do that but you know it's easy just to slip by a degree and another degree and another degree and before we know where we are we're off course it's easy to slip in our lives by just letting go one or two things And before we know where we are, we're off course. And when we're off course, we become vulnerable because the enemy will come along and put something else in your path that looks attractive, may even be a counterfeit. Before we know where we are, we're in a place that we weren't intending to go. So this morning, let's make that choice.
just going to invite you, if you feel to, if there's anyone here this morning who has not made Jesus Lord and Saviour, we'd love to pray with you. If that's you, we'd love you to come down the front or speak to someone here. We would love to do that. I'm just going to give an opportunity here before I hand back to Tim. And when I hand back to Tim, he will invite you for, for prayer as we normally do. But right now, I'm just going to give an invitation. If you feel that the Holy Spirit is telling you to come to the altar, either to leave something behind or to receive what you need. The altar is going to be open just for a moment while we do that. So I'm just going to ask the worship team just to... I'll actually step down to make it easier, but I'll still be here. So Sam, if you could just lead us for a moment. We're just going to keep this brief. There's just an opportunity here. It has to be prompted by Holy Spirit, so I'm not doing anything other than allowing the invitation for the Holy Spirit to move. But this will be between you